35 years ago. <laughs> What does it take to make concrete, long-lasting changes? And is permanent change even possible? Well, if you've ever tried to make changes, you know that uh, maybe see, maybe no. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, change is possible. Change your mind, and you change your life. This is going to touch into a different variety of possibilities that are available to each and every one of us when we reach that place where we feel, I need to make a change. Of course, we just passed a time that is familiar with everybody so far as the new year and making new year resolutions. And we know, because we've been there, how those are. If you are young and you are wanting to get involved in the celebration of welcoming the new year and getting rid of the old year, then you're probably a little hungover by the time you get to resolution. <laughs> Maybe at that point, you might have a stimulus that I resolve never to get in this state again. <laughs> but getting back to changing your mind when you change your life, you have to realize something with regard to the mind. The mind loves what is familiar. So when you suggest to yourself, you suggest to your mind, we're going to make a change here. You have to realize that the tendency of the mind is going to be to draw you back to what is known because it feels secure. So what you're really doing is you're breaking out of patterns here, patterns that are familiar to you. And you're choosing to step into the unknown. And there's going to be resistance to it, even if the familiar is destructive. We go back to what is known even if it doesn't serve us. Well, you have to be willing to look and see what is it in you, even if you don't own it, even if you're in denial of it, to see what it is that's in such resistance to this. Okay, so you finally make up your mind. You say, this is it. I'm gonna make some changes here, I've had it. I've been smoking for 25 years, my lungs are telling me it's time to quit. I've been living in these conditions for so long, they've become depressing, and I no longer wanna be depressed. So, you get all the things together that you see you want to change, you put them in one big bundle and you say, all right, I'm going to do it! And you do it all at once. Wow, that's a lot of energy, isn't it? Yes. It's pretty exciting for about the first five minutes. <laughs> Funny thing is, though, it usually doesn't work. You end up running all over, trying to get everything to happen all at once, and you do it with no real direction, <laughs> no real goal, no real focus, and no plan. Okay, this is a part of us that we need to address if we're going to get it to be on our side. And that is, people don't plan to fail they fail to plan, and then to follow through with the plan. But you need to have a plan in operation. And instead of trying to do everything at once, do a couple of things, or maybe one thing. 
I mean, to make improvement is to bring yourself to a place of bringing that change to possibility that then leads to probability that then leads to success. Now, all of these are baby steps and they are necessary as we awaken. Now, do realize now that you can be involved in your life in a very unconscious way and still want to make changes, which is leading you, even though you don't see it, to a place of becoming more conscious of who you are because what you're doing is you're choosing to improve your life as you see it. This improvement is going to lead you closer and closer to an internal realization of what you're really wanting to accomplish here, and that is to have a meaningful relationship with yourself. You may say, I want to have new friends. I want to have better friends. I want to have happy friends. I'm going to can all the friends I have right now. And I'm going to jump out into life realizing, my God, look at all the fish in the sea. Failing to realize you're using the same bait. So you're probably going to catch the same fish. Which is making reference to the fact that if you're going to actually experience new friends that you enjoy, it's going to be because you make the internal change vibrationally to attract them to yourself. Otherwise, you're going to attract the same ones over and over and over again. And it's not because life is punishing you. It's because you haven't learned what you've needed to learn in order to grow on to that place of meaningful relationships with others. You have to have that meaningful relationship with yourself. Now, these things lead you to a place of looking again of what is it I am doing in trying to actually make a change. Well, what is it you're doing? Sometimes you can be so overwhelmed with the density in your life that you aren't really present to be able to see that it's all about you. You're still putting it out there. I, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times in my own personal life as well as in counseling others, I have been confronted by the fact of denial. And denial leads you to a place of wanting to blame others for the way that your life is. To such an extent that when good news is brought to your attention, you even deny the good news because you prefer to stay as a victim in your own experience. We all are waking up, and in our awakening, we're realizing that playing the part of a victim is a very unconscious response to the patterns of behavior that we are still clinging to and believing we can't let go of. And this includes all of them. There's none of it. But the nice thing is, is we are eternal beings. We are involved in an ongoing series of life experiences that are known as lifetimes. Look and see the one that you're in right now because this is the one that matters the most. This is the one you're giving yourself the opportunity to live. As you can begin to open up to and realize you are wanting to make changes and the changes you're wanting to make are in harmony with your own self-discovery. Because as you discover more of who you are, then everything good seems less distant from you and begins to reveal itself as apparently in you, but you have to recognize it and be able to embrace it if you're going to then have the experience of it in a long-term plan of action. So... You get back to the basics, you get back to the simple things, you get back to where you are right now, as well as holding on to this awakening that is dawning in you. And you look and you say, hey, it's like driving a car. You miss a turn, your GPS doesn't berate you. 
doesn't call you a schmuck. <laughs> As a matter of fact, all it says is make an authorized U-turn. <laughs> That's it. So we begin to treat ourselves with the same respect, with the same ease, and we learn to learn from our mistakes. We continue on in our awakening. We don't need to go to the place of trying to reinvent the wheel for things that are working well. We use them as supports. We recognize them as allies. We see that this is progress that we have made to this point and then insert that into where we are in choosing to make changes. But I do caution you. You have to stay present. You have to be with yourself because Thinking that we let go of limiting beliefs, changing from the inside when we actually haven't, is something that you'll probably bump up against. You'll probably encounter it, not just once or twice, but maybe even more times. And that's because we are the masters of being unconscious. <laughs> we learned this one. Look at it. Look at how well we've learned to be unconscious. Now that's a plus and a negative. It's a negative from the fact that you see yourself still unconscious. It's a plus from the fact that you see you're able to learn. So take your ability to learn and put it into learning to be conscious. And being conscious means practice being present. You practice being present and then insert your energies into making change and you'll find those changes become a living reality for you. So, it all gets right back to the first thing that I said, and that is, you must change your mind if you are going to change your life. Thank you for your attention. For more information about the Metaphysical Church of Enlightenment or the Rodin Foundation, please go to our website at www.rodin.org. If you have been inspired by the revelations shared in these podcasts, please donate to the Rodin Foundation's ongoing efforts to help others help themselves at www.rodin.org.